think there's substances in vaping, products of any kind that are dangerous to health. What are those? So what we know, uh, flavorings, we know that the flavorings can have some toxic effects. We know that um, some of the uh, nicotine, of course, is, is dangerous. We know that there are nanoparticles, which can include heavy metals like copper. That's just to name a few, uh, which are potentially dangerous. So you've also said there's a recent study that looks at propylene glycol and glycerin. The reason why I ask for this level of detail is because some speculate that the products that are at fault here might be counterfeit or that the substances might include things like THC or other additives as opposed to something inherent to vaping itself. Do we yet know what the answer to that is? I think we don't. We really don't. Um, it, it may be a number of things. Uh, yes, there was a recent study, and it was an early study. A lot of the work we see now is in animal models because this is such a new phenomenon. But that is compelling, and of course, that's concerning because those two uh, uh, propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin, as you mentioned, are in almost all e-cigarettes. So I don't think we know yet. I think we have to be cautious. Alex, at the same time, these products, at least, uh, you know, some of them were intended to help people get off of much more harmful, at least we think much more harmful, regular cigarettes. So is the, uh, oh, is there a risk of an overly broad solution here by people who say we should just ban all vaping products for the time being? Absolutely. Uh, you know, our main concern here has to be the 13 million people who have switched to these products who are, because of the scary headlines and all of the hysteria about this, are actually being frightened into returning to smoking. At the same time, this conversation is about 36 million people who continue to smoke. These people need to be encouraged to try smoke-free alternatives to cigarettes, uh, and, and vapor products are certainly a part of that category. Do you feel comfortable saying that even with the illnesses and deaths that we've seen and the level of uh, confusion about what's causing them, Alex? Definitely. I, I use these products every day. I was a smoker for 21 years, two packs a day for most of that. And I, I switched to vaping on a whim. I, I'm, I'm what you would call an accidental quitter. I've been using these products for six years, and I just haven't had a cigarette since. I Dr. feel absolutely comfortable recommending these products. Uh, well, Dr. Boykin, how do you respond to that? If it is uh, helping improve public health uh, case by case in, in situations like Alex's? So, uh, first of all, I commend Alex for quitting. I think that's great. Um, we, I think we all agree that, that uh, smoking is, is really evil. Um, as a pediatrician, I really come at this from a different angle. And my concern um, is really looking at the incredible uh, surge in teenage use of these products. Over 20% of kids as of last year, and even more in New York State where I'm from, um, are, are high school students are, are current users. Um, and these are kids who probably would not be smoking cigarettes. And so there's a number of concerns about that. So my focus really is in taking them away from the youth market. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion, whether they work as a cessation aid, I don't think we have enough information. I think they should be studied. I think there's plenty of room for scientific inquiry, but yeah. having the number of products on the market that we have available to teenagers is not the answer to that. Alex, would you be on board with a solution that banned anything like this for teenagers? And what about banning flavored products quickly? Well, first of all, the, the national minimum legal sales age for these products is 18. Uh, no child should have access to these products, but I think we have to come to terms with the fact that they do have access. Young people are using these products, and so we're not going to be able to ban our way out of this problem. We need to be having critical conversations with kids, equipping them with information in order to navigate life, playing to their strengths and empowering them, and helping them make better decisions.